you're my pediatrician, so you know about a lot of things. Strep throat, how tall I'm supposed to be, and the condition I was born with, cystic fibrosis. You probably know about newborn screenings for cystic fibrosis, although they're kind of new. They didn't even have them when I was born. But did you know that a baby born with just one CFG mutation could still have CF? It's confusing because sometimes babies with just one mutation are only carriers and never get CF. That's why it's important to know exactly how to read a newborn screening for CF and what to tell parents along the way. In fact, doctors, pediatricians, and nurses have said they would like to know more about CF newborn screening. So I volunteered to help on one condition. Ta-da! Okay, let's get started. This won't take long, and I promise, no shots. The first thing for you to know is, how is a CF diagnosis made? And for that, I'm going to need a little help. Catherine Munch is a nurse practitioner who works at an accredited CF center. A proper CF diagnosis usually takes three steps. First, a newborn screening is done to look for an elevated IRT level. If that IRT level is elevated, a second screening is done to detect some of the most common mutations for cystic fibrosis. And finally, most importantly, a sweat test is done at an accredited CF center. That seems pretty simple. It's good to know what happens in each step and how it relates to what parents want to know. Does my child have CF? When a baby's born, blood samples are taken and sent to the state lab where immunoreactive trypsinogen, or IRT, levels are measured. Samples with elevated IRT immediately undergo DNA analysis by the state to detect the most common mutations for cystic fibrosis. Time for a pop quiz. If a newborn has an elevated IRT, does that mean a definite diagnosis of CF? Yes or no? No because other things like neonatal stress can cause a high IRT level. A second screening must be done to look for about 40 to 50 of the most common CF mutations. But here's the thing, there are over 2,000 mutations for cystic fibrosis. That's why it can be really confusing. Screening for just 40 or 50 means the state's panels are not enough to rule out a diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. 2,000 mutations? Wow. We've heard stories from parents who were told by their doctor that their baby couldn't have CF because they only had one mutation on the DNA screen. So we knew we needed to do more education for providers about their role in this very complex process. But if a newborn has one of the 40 to 50 CF genes, that means? It means that either the child is a carrier or may have CF. Now, a child who has one mutation probably doesn't have CF, and it's comforting to know that fewer than three out of a hundred babies with one CF gene will actually have cystic fibrosis. But doctors and parents should know that the presence of any CF mutation indicates a need for a sweat test to see if the child has cystic fibrosis. This is kind of hard to remember. Do you have a special cheat sheet for doctors and nurse providers? Sure, here you go. A high or elevated IRT is a sensitive but not very specific test for CF because the elevation can be caused by other factors. Less than 2% of infants with a high IRT have cystic fibrosis, but a high IRT does indicate the need for more screening. A DNA panel screens for 40 or 50 of the most common CF mutations but that's out of over 2,000 possible CF mutations. So remember, a child with one mutation, they're likely carriers, but could still have cystic fibrosis. Children with two CF mutations are likely to have cystic fibrosis. But again, the gold standard for diagnosing CF is with a sweat test at your accredited CF center. You should refer your patient to a CF center for a sweat test if there is a mutation found on any screen. Genetic counseling is also required for infants who have a CF mutation. Okay, here's one last thing that doctors said they want to know. How to discuss CF newborn screening results with parents. I think I'm going to need some more help here. 
Dr. Antel is a clinical psychologist. It's a delicate balance when talking to parents. You want to reassure them, but if you tell them not to worry and the sweat test comes back positive, you might lose their trust. It's really important to always talk to parents in person, never over the phone, and definitely not by leaving a message. I just want to talk to you a little bit because I've received some of her screening results, and it shows that she carries one gene mutation for cystic fibrosis. Tamara has cystic fibrosis? This is a screening, not a diagnosis. Having one gene for CF usually doesn't mean your child has CF, but it does mean that it's important to take Tamara for a sweat test at a CF center. This test only takes about an hour and it won't hurt, but it will confirm whether or not she has cystic fibrosis or if she's just a carrier for the gene. You said mutation. Did she get the CF gene from me? A cystic fibrosis gene can be inherited from the mom or the dad, so it would be a good idea to have Tamara's brother tested. Someone can be a carrier for CF and never have the condition or the symptoms. But cystic fibrosis, that's really serious, isn't it? Cystic fibrosis is a serious condition. It affects a child's lungs and digestive system. It's important to make the diagnosis and to start treatment to prevent complications. It's just a lot to take in. All parents are different, and they're going to receive this information differently. So use skills such as active listening by listening to their questions, responding back with empathy, telling them you understand their concerns, and you want to get the information they need. Then, if you don't know the answers to their questions, tell them that that's a good question, you need to get more information, and you will meet back with them shortly. I know it feels overwhelming, Anna, but I'm here for you and for Tamara, and I'm going to connect you with the CFF, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, because they can answer a lot of your questions. A lot of people with CF grow up to live fairly normal lives. Look at me, I'm pretty normal, mostly. Remember, after your first conversation with parents, they're likely to have a lot of questions, and they're most likely to go to the internet for information. So give them reputable sources to go to for information, or encourage them to call you with any questions they have. If you have any questions about CF newborn screenings, or how to read them, you should call the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation at one 800 by cf or go to cff.org. Okay, well that's it. Oh, except for one more thing. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for deciding to become a doctor and for helping parents understand CF. You rock! <laughs>